Shadowly Brothers, I hope you can hear me. Still fuzzy Dunlop sk skates and you're still watching Bridgeburners TV. Now I want to talk about uh, some low ballers here. So it's 6.05 a.m. on a Tuesday and I've got to go do an estimate later on. And well later on, pretty early. I gotta be downtown area by 9 a.m. and then I have to go to the climbing store. And uh, after that, I don't have a fucking job today. I have a job tomorrow. And the estimate today, I'm 95% sure I can get it if I want. I saw a picture of the tree. It's easy. I talked to the guy for about half an hour yesterday. He's really fucking cool. And uh, I should get it. Also, the guy lives in a fucking rich area, which is fucking key. It's fucking key, guys, okay? Like, if you guys go into business for yourselves, again, at first there's scarcity. And, you know, you got to fucking... Well, maybe you don't have to, but it's very likely that you're going to end up, at least at the beginning, doing way too much work for not enough money. Which, it, it, it's fucking normal. Now, the upside to this is that even if this is the case... Even if you undercharge, you're like, man, for me, uh, I'm a fucking professional at undercharging people. And I usually estimate the time fucking wrong. Like it takes, I estimate that it'll take half as much time as it actually takes me. So even if it ends up taking me twice as long to do the job, meaning I get paid in the end half as much per hour, I still fucking come out like a fucking bandit. And I'm not even charging close to market prices yet. I'm, I'm learning what it is. Now, at the beginning... Our very first job took six hours. Well, it took around four and a half, but we made a fuck up, and um, it took an hour and a half to fix. Well, I fucked up. Okay, so, but we made 650 bucks. So it's over $100 an hour total. It's not bad for a fucking day's work, and we split it right down the middle, 50-50. My second job, I charged 200 bucks to take down a couple of limbs on a tree, but it took me 10 hours. And I didn't think it would take 10 hours. And the guy wanted me to go back and take down the rest of the tree for 200 bucks. And he didn't want to pay me the full 200 bucks I made that day. And it was raining. I worked in the fucking rain, man. And he wanted to give me 100 bucks out of the 200 bucks that I charged him. And I charged him two bills for like a fucking thousand dollar job fuck. And he still didn't want to fucking pay. And he said, well, this way, you have to come back. I said, fuck you. I'm not fucking coming back. Give me my money. Fuck. And anyway, I didn't go back. He called me a few weeks later and because uh, it was raining when I was supposed to go back. And I called him to say I couldn't go in the rain. I wasn't climbing a 50-foot tree for $200 in the fucking rain. I was leaning over his house. And he said, why not? And I said, fuck you. And he says, okay, tomorrow. I said, not tomorrow. I have other fucking customers. You're the only one that can work on a fucking weekend. It has to be done on the weekend for you. So no, you got to fucking wait. And he says, okay, well... Uh, I can do it during the week, so uh, again, tomorrow. No, 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 fuck you, you gotta fucking wait. So he says, well, it sounds like you don't want to do it. I said, I don't want to do it. Every time you fucking push me, every time you fucking make me jump through another hoop, it makes me less and less likely to do it. You know what, I'm not fucking doing it, fuck you. And I fucking hung up on him, fuck, and then I blocked him. Yeah, fuck him, fuck. So, <clears throat> after that, I've done about 10 to 15 jobs, I guess, and the first, at first, I was doing jobs that took anywhere from three to six hours, and I was charging around 200 to 250 bucks. And most of it's profit. Again, I spent maybe 10, 15 bucks gas in each job, and that's pretty much my only operating expense unless I wreck a chain or something like that, and that can cost 50 bucks to fix, which I've done, as you, you guys know. So <clears throat> my whole logic was that working for 20 bucks an hour even for someone else, after taxes, it comes out to getting 12. Working for 15 bucks an hour, you're getting fucking 10 bucks, like whatever. But when all is said and done, you're making 100 bucks a day at a fucking blue pill job working for someone else. If you're really fucking lucky, some fucking how, you'll make 200 bucks a day when all is said and done. Now, 200 bucks a day net is very good. It's $1,000 a week after taxes. Again, net, it's very good. For you to make that much, I don't know what the gross has to be. I've never been that high up in a tax bracket. The most I've ever made working for a company was uh, slightly over twenty dollars an hour, and man, I've done a lot of shit, guys. I've been a, I was a professional welder, on a, in a high volume fucking production line, and 
I also welded in the Great White North, fucking 10 hours away. I did trade school for auto body repair. Before that, I was a ski instructor. Yeah, just like fucking Trudeau, right? <laughs> no, except I'm fucking good and I'm not a fucking faggot that's ruining the fucking country. Because all I care about is gay pride and fucking legalizing weed. Fuck. Both those shits should be fucking illegal. It should be illegal to be gay. But anyway, so where was I? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So I was saying that my logic, the basis for how much I charge is that I would like to make out with, let's say, you know, $500 a day. But if I end up making $200 a day because I undercharge, it's still good. So even, even on a three-hour job, okay, or a job that I'd estimate would take only three hours and I charge 200 bucks, it ends up taking me six. I'm still not having to work 10 hours for those 200 bucks. And even if I did, it'd still be good. And I'd be taking shit from some fucking asshole that doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. And everyone says, they say, oh, you know, you'd be, you'd be a bad employee. You're a bad. No, 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 I'm a fucking awesome employee. I'm a fucking amazing employee. But I'm fed up of being fucking taken advantage of and being the only one that fucking works everywhere I fucking go. And it, it's fucking crazy. Again, I meet fellow travelers along the way, but pff, whatever. Whatever. I used to have a problem speaking truth to power, and now that's no longer the case. Anyway, where is this power? Just because you're my boss, that's not fucking power. Fuck. Mutual respect, man. You have to show me you're good if you want me to fucking respect you. Otherwise, you're just someone else that's trying to fucking get rich off my fucking talent. So no more, no more of that. In business for myself, hard work, mine, period. And, you know, at first, yeah, you know, 200 bucks a day, it's fucking cool. And... Then, you know, I get more and more calls, same caliber of customer, you know, they don't really have that much money, but whatever, you know, if, if, if I like them and they don't fucking rub me the wrong way, then I'll do it. I'll help them out. And I'm flexible. You know, we can work out some sort of negotiation. Like I can always do less work for less money. You know, oh, if you want to only pay this much, then okay, I, I'll do everything, but I won't touch that branch, that branch or that branch, or I won't take this away because it's too much work. Anyway, whatever, you know, I'm flexible like that. And every job leads to another job. It's really good. So I moved on from making $200 a job to approximately $500 for the same caliber of job. So this just means that I vet my customers a little bit differently. The ones that can't pay or they're not willing to pay or that don't respect the work. In the past, I would have tried to get the job anyway. And it sucks because they don't pay enough. The job is always super fucking gnarly and it's just not worth it. So. I would bust my balls trying to get those jobs. And then you get other jobs that are fucking easy. And you get a better idea of how long it's going to take you. And, you know, it's not a secret. You explain to the customer. I always explain. Oh, well, they say, why so much? Okay, because I have to fucking go up there and then I have to tie a rope there. And then I have to come back down and then I have to walk up to that one. And that one's fucking cracked. And I have to cut all this shit out of the way first so that when it falls, it doesn't get caught up. And then I have to go back down and then I have to go back up and then I have to bring... And they're like, wow, okay, like it's complicated. Okay, cool. Like, I, I agree. When can you start? And then sometimes they wonder, you know, they're like, oh, you know, should I trust this guy? As soon as they see me put on my gear, as soon as they see me start going up the tree, they're like, this guy knows what he's doing. And as soon as they see a pile of branches on the ground, which doesn't take long because tree work leaves a huge mess, but it takes about fucking within 10 minutes of climbing and cutting, there's a massive brush pile on the ground. And as soon as they see that and that registers that, okay, this guy, just what he did so far, like that's going to have to be cleaned up and taken away. And like, that's, it's a huge fucking job and he's not even like getting started yet. So we're getting a good deal. So yeah, I moved on to being able to make around $500 a day for the same type of work and easier even. So now that's still way below market price. Ideally $500 for half a day or a little bit less than half a day, like a third of a day or a quarter of a day, that'd be ideal. And because again, the work is very dangerous. The work is dangerous and it, it's not necessarily time consuming, but it can be. Depending on the complexity of the job, you have to instill more fail safes, more tie-in points, make sure the tree falls exactly how you want it to fall. And if a customer is willing to pay for that, great, because you can afford to fuck around all day before you make one cut, making sure everything is in place perfectly. And it doesn't matter because no matter how long it takes you, you know you're getting paid something fucking fair. And at the end of the day, you'll go home fucking smiling and the customer's happy. But if you undercharge, it's fucking, 
you're in the middle of a tree and it starts to rain and you've been there for way too long and you just wonder what you've been getting your, what you got yourself into. So I had, the customers have been getting better and better, but at the very beginning, my very first job, who was a very good customer, she gave my number to someone else and I did a job for this guy. I think that's how I, I think that's how he found me. Maybe he found me on Kijiji, but I think that's how he found me. And I really liked the first customer, so I wanted to do a good job for this guy. And he was nice, but he has no money. And he, or he's cheap. Both. He has no money. Like, he, he, he's pseudo-rich. So he has a giant fucking property. It's around an acre and a half. Wrought iron fence. Big house. Lexus convertible. And he's got a Jeep. And, you know, he's about 60, 60 years old, I guess. And, you know, the, the lawn and the property is beautifully manicured. Nice modern house in the country. And he wanted to make his trees go tall. And he's got about 35 trees on his property. And they're all, they all needed fucking trimming, man. They were all growing like all fucked up. So I said, okay, well, I can't take care of 100%. Well, I could, but he just wanted me to be there for a day. He's like, what can you do for a day? So I said, okay, I can take everything up, you know, to around uh, anything below 15 feet or 20 feet on all 35 trees. I'll cut off. I'll take everything away. And they're going to be shocked a little bit, which is why I'm not cutting off more. But if you want me to cut off more, then I'll come back another time. I'll cut off more and they'll grow even taller. But you've got to get like a basic fucking manicure for all your trees before you do anything with them. So he said, okay. He says, how much? I said, 225 which was way too little. I should have charged him fucking 700 bucks for the fucking job I did. So I charged him 225 and then he says 200 So I did it for 200 Then he asked me if I would take a personal check. When the answer is no, but I said yes, stupidly. And... About six hours through the job, it took me longer than I thought. It took me seven hours. So right, right when I was cleaning up, he fucking comes outside. And he says, great job, man. Looks awesome. How much longer? And I said, I'm almost done. And he says, okay, well, I have to run now. But he says, how am I going to pay you? It's like, pay me now. Like, what are you, retarded? Fuck. Like, you should have paid me before I started. I'm using a fucking chainsaw all day, man. I'm risking my life to make your yard look good. Like, you know, so he doesn't, I, and I, I'm like, oh, I want to act professional. Like the money is no object. I'm like, yeah, whatever, you know, like we'll, we'll sort it out after. Like, I'll call you when I'm done acting like I don't need the money, you know? So I finish and a few, a few days later I call him and I have to go back there. It's like an hour and a half there and back fuck to get my check for $200. And then he asks me. Why he clear all the rest of the branches? And I'm like, well, because $200 only gets you so much, man. And he tells me he's got this giant property. We was estimates and shit, and they're in that video, and they're selling it, and they wanted a manic. They wanted like a bunch of shit done, so I quoted him $2,500 for the front yard. So he says, okay, good. And he says, what about the backyard? And that's gonna take about two days, but there's a lot of shit to do, and that's still a really good price. So. I said, he says, uh, can you do the backyard also? I said, sure. And in the backyard, there's a lot of shit, like way more than in the front. But, you know, I want to like make a, give him a kind of a fucking deal. So I said, okay, 6,000 bucks. I'll do the back in the front and I'll take everything away. And the property is about four acres, man. There's about an acre of trees that I have to clear. There's 65 trees that I have to cut down and they're all like over a fucking foot thick. And I have to slice them up and take them all away and get rid of all the branches. It's a lot of fucking work, man. And what I'm charging, it's not even, it's not even 50 bucks a tree. So I tell him this and he says, it's too expensive. And then the phone rings and I go and I look, take another look. And I, and I, you know, I rework some stuff in my mind, do some calculations. And I say, okay, if I don't have to clean anything up, if I can just stack the wood here, then I can do it for 4,500. So he says, okay. And he says, give it to me in writing. So I give it to him in writing, fuck, I spend like fucking three hours doing it, like all like the way I want and everything. No customers ask for this, by the way. But whatever, you know, like I, I know how to do this shit, like, you know, I went to fucking school and shit, not that that fucking taught me anything, but like, whatever, okay? I wasn't born yesterday, so I know how to write a formal estimate. So I write it up for him, and he calls me up a week later, and he says we're good to go. And... Then he tells me, he says, but the investors group, they want a receipt because, you know, we're going to declare it for tax purposes. I said, okay, fine. Then he said, also, then he said, when can you start? 
And I said, whatever, give me a few days notice. I said, the job will take around a week, but plan two weeks for, because it's weather dependent and shit. And he's like, oh, you're not going to work in the rain? And I said, well, no, not for that price. I'm not going to climb trees in the rain for a paltry sum. And he says, yeah, but, you know, this could lead to other work. I said, yeah, but, you know, I have other jobs that pay a lot more than this. that are a lot closer and that require me to do a lot less. So I had to go to that property, which is an hour away and an hour back. I had to go there about six times. And I had to spend an hour there looking around at everything and over and over again. Because every time I would go up there, he would add stuff to the job. And, you know, I've gone there six times. I've gone to his property three times. And he asked me to give him a contract now because my formal estimate, it wasn't enough or something. So he asked me to write him a contract. And then two days ago, or three days ago, he asked me uh, what was happening because I said I'd call him back. I'd send it to him. I was going to send it to him right away. Good thing I didn't because I landed a couple of other jobs since then. And he uh, he called me back and he said, I want a contract and everything. I said, yeah, no problem. And he said, I want your ID number. I want your driver's license number. And I want the ID of everybody in your crew and all that shit. And uh, I said, yeah, okay, whatever. If I, like anything else, I'm not doing that, by the way. And anyway, so he starts putting all these stipulations and he's like, okay, because we're approaching a deadline and you know, you need to do And So, okay, so basically this guy thinks that he's dangling a fucking carrot in front of me. And because this poor guy, me, I was born yesterday, so I'm a fucking idiot and I have no other work except for this guy. And I'm relying on only this guy to give me my fucking carrot. So he's just dangling it and dangling it and dangling it and he's making me jump through hoops. He thinks he is. He thinks he is. And anyway, I wrote him up. I wrote him up a contract and I sent it to him this morning and he's going to shit his fucking pants when he sees it because it's a standard contract. I'm not sticking it to him. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. And he wants a receipt, that's fine. But he's paying fucking 15% tax on the receipt. So $4,500 becomes pretty much $5,200 if you want a receipt. So that's added there. The other thing too, it's a week-long job, and oh yeah, and I quoted you six thousand. I went down to forty-five hundred, even plus seven hundred dollars. You're still saving eight hundred bucks, so you can't complain. No one else will come even close to doing it for that price. Secondly, um, <laughs> yes, standard contractors fare. Fifty percent of the of the money is paid up front, up front before the job's completion. So you want contract, my friend, you want an official contract, this is your official contract. You're going to pay me approximately $2,875.50 and I think $75.50 or something before I even get started, or I'm not getting started. So, and then after one week, you're going to give me approximately $1,300 when the job's half done. And after the second week, you're going to give me the remaining $1,300. And this isn't to protect both of us. This is to protect me. I'm the one doing the work. I'm the one risking my life. You're the one making money off other people doing nothing. Lowballing me. Again, for risking my life. You think you're clever. It's fine. I understand. This is what I'm doing. I'm protecting myself uh, by following the order of operations. And yeah, you might think I'm sticking it to you or whatever. I'm not. This is just what I'm supposed to do. And you thought you found a chump. And, you know, I'm a chump in a lot of ways, but not in this way. And even if it means me not getting the job because you're refusing to pay up front, that's good. Because that means you have no fucking money. So why would I want to fucking work for you anyway? If you agree to my terms, then great, great. You want to give me $3,000 in my pocket before I start working for you? That's fucking amazing. I can go, I can get any fucking extra gear I need. You know, I can make the job easier, safer, more efficient. And that's that. And, but if you don't, then there's no job. So I sent that to this guy and he thought too, he thought that, you know, by putting pressure on me about a deadline, that it was going to make me lower the price or something like that. No, 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 no. It's going to make me raise the price. You want it done quicker? More money, my friend. That's why I'm taking two weeks. I'm not going to devote my time to this guy. At first I was going to spend five days there, like straight. No, no, no. Now I'm taking two weeks. I'm going to go there when I fucking feel like it. And if I have another job, it's easier that pays more. I'm going to do that in the meantime. And this guy is going to wait. And it doesn't matter because he's already going to have paid me 50% up front and then another 25% 
after a week and so on and so forth if he chooses to go through with it. But he probably won't, and if he does not, then I will be better for it. Now, he won't find anyone else to do it for that price, so there's a good chance he'll call me back after. And if and when he does call me back, well, guess what? I'm really busy. You want it? Price is fucking going up even higher. So I will let you know how he fucking reacts. And, you know, uh, I gotta go do another estimate today. I gotta go pretty soon, actually, but... Guy sent me two pictures. Looks very straightforward. Rich area. And people there are willing to pay. You know, they understand the value of fucking good service. And a guy up from the Yellow Pages is calling me today. I have a meeting with him. Because he found me on Friday or on Thursday, I don't know, sometime last week. And he wants to uh, he wants to sell me an advertising package in the Yellow Pages so I don't have to fucking keep advertising on Kijiji, which is like Craigslist. But, like, it's a lot like Craigslist. It's okay. I get a lot of business from there, actually. But 90% of the time, the caliber of customer is extremely fucking poor. Ask Darren. Darren fucking knows, man. These people, they have no fucking money. They don't respect what you're doing. And not only do they not want to pay your price, they expect to either get the job for free or even more likely for you to pay them for the privilege of working for them. So it would be nice to legitimize myself in the yellow pages, you know, because you can pay by month and depending on where you want to be advertised. Like for me, for me, I think it would cost like between 15 and $50 a month, depending on like the types of listings that I want, because I don't want to appear everywhere. I don't want to go to the city or anything like that. There's no place to park. There's no place to bring in my trailer. There's power lines everywhere. I want to work in the suburbs, in the country, close to where I live, where people are fucking rich. And the jobs are fairly easy and straightforward. There's not red tape of permits and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, you can see all my fucking gear behind me, man. Uh, yeah, I made, I made quite a substantial amount so far, but I don't even know how much. I made, I made probably around $4,000, I guess, in the past, maybe between three and $4,000, in the first month that I've started. And I haven't been working every day. You no know, business at first was very wavy, but now I have demand every day. I get I get one to two calls pretty much every day, and a lot of the time I don't answer them, and I refuse a lot of jobs, a lot. So, you know, it, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, today I gotta go get some fucking supplies. I sprained my fucking ankle yesterday. Skateboarding. It's all fucking swollen here. that oh there's a bruise forming yeah but anyway i can't really walk and that, so therefore i can't really spike up a tree i can climb though because climbing is just with a rope your feet are in the air most of the time you only use your legs to position yourself so i can do that so i'm going to go do this estimate today and i'm going to go to the climbing store and if the job is easy well i would like to say i could do it right now but that's not a good idea because I could, I could fucking further aggravate my injury. So if I take the job, which I most likely will, I'm going to tell him I could do it Friday because it's supposed to rain Thursday. And I'll probably charge him, you know, another 500 bucks because it's a fairly easy job, but it's still kind of a ways away and I have to take everything away back. And it should take me around half a day. So if I estimate half a day, that means a full day. <laughs> but the trick is, you know, if you give the customer also a fair price and they're appreciative of it because they deserve a fair price and you do an excellent job, then the word of mouth travels. Every single job I've done has led to another job. And every single person that I've worked for, except for the second lowballing customer and this motherfucker that I was talking about, every single person has given me extra. Every single person. So I think I've done maybe... 15 or 16 jobs so far in the past month averaging let's say making a thousand dollars a week but i don't work five days a week you know <laughs> I work like two days a week one <laughs> and i'm making that much and but you know I, I need a lot of fucking gear it's not always going to be like that but at first i'm buying a lot of stuff to help give me a kind of baseline level of efficiency and productivity like my trailer and like ropes and like, you know, enough saws and the essential climbing gear. The other day I grazed my pants with my chainsaw. I wasn't even spinning full speed. I just grazed my pants and I cut my leg. So even though I have chainsaw chaps, I, have to, I had to fucking buy chainsaw pants. 
I had to order them because they didn't have my size in stock. And you know, like it's you know, that's 150 bucks, another fucking investment. But you know, once I have them, I have them. So same thing with all the other shit. You know, I'm not gonna have to do it every week. But you know, right now, like the shit that I want to get, like it costs a little bit. So you know, I get a few things at once, and then I save a little bit and pay some things back, and then you know, accumulate, 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 accumulate. So that's pretty much where I'm at right now, man. I'm still fucking rolling. Things are still good. And uh, yeah, I wanted to let you know how I'm dealing with this fucking lowballing customer. And I'll let you know how it turns out after. But I've come a long way in a short time. And, you know, if I do say so myself, but man, if you look at my earlier videos, like Weekend at Fuzzies and stuff, and like, and still now, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but like, I really didn't know what the fuck I was doing, man. So anyway, thanks for all your fucking comments, man, and uh, thanks for watching the videos, and I hope everything's good. And yeah, j -Lo, you mentioned, yeah, in the future, if things go well, I'll be able to fucking have this fucking crew. And yeah, man, I I'd like to. I'd like to fucking have a crew. I'd like to have a staff. I'd like to fucking hire my friends, you know, but uh, my friends, like, my friends that I met, like, through MGTOW or shit like that, you know, that were really like-minded individuals. Not people that, like, sat at a desk near me. Those guys aren't my friends. And the one, you know, I've had a couple of businesses in my life, and pretty much all of them, except for a couple, like, nothing came of them. And the reason is that all of them, like, I, I started all of my businesses to fill a demand that people around me had for products. And, like, including the last business, I started my t-shirt business, which I started about five years ago, but, man, I fucking... I made so little off that and I put so much into it. You know, every single t-shirt I've ever worn in my videos has all been made by me. You know, like this sweatshirt I made with the fucking glow-in-the-dark fucking smoke cloud on the back. But yeah, everything. Everything I made it myself. I'll show you guys. Uh, and I didn't like, ha I didn't send away to have it made. I made it myself. So a uh, fucking workshop and everything like that. But the reason is why all my businesses fucking pretty much fucking failed before. And this one is doing great. It's because the businesses that I had before were based around the needs of those around me. And I thought it was smart, you know? Now, I'm not saying like, oh, you know, let's say you start a business, your friends will support you. At least, like, you know, they'll buy one of your, like, fucking trinkets, even if they have no interest in it because they're your friends. I wasn't even thinking like that. I thought, okay, well, all my friends do this, so I should start selling them this, you know? And every time I've done that, it's, it's like they deliberately go out of their way to not give me their business. And they have no money. My friends are bums, fuck. So, yeah, again, they're, they're, I use a friend, the term friend very loosely. Like, these guys are all fucking dead to me. I blocked ever since I started making MGTOW videos, fuck. Like, and I really realized that I have to hold everybody to the same standard. And that's the same standard to which I hold myself. Maybe, maybe it's unfairly high to some people, but whatever. Fuck off. Like, fuck you. What the fuck do I want to know you for then? Like, you don't even, whatever, fuck. So, yeah, I use the term friends loosely, but, yeah, they never fucking helped me. They never fucking did shit for me, man. Not even one fucking t-shirt. Steve the fucking retard, two years ago, like, he sees, a, like, I put up a picture on Facebook or something of, like, all the t-shirts that I just made. And he writes a comment like, oh, one of them is nice. Uh, when I have $20, I'll buy it off you. Like, I'll buy one when I have $20. And that was two years ago. Like, still, not even not even one. Like, imagine if that was my business. Imagine if I needed the money. Imagine if I, if I started that business for my friends, you know, to fucking clothe everybody the way I clothe myself and I'd give a deal and everything. No, no, man. Like, not one, man. Not fucking one. So this business, fuck my friends, man. They're fucking useless. This is, this is for people that can afford to have property with fucking trees on that property and who can afford to maintain those trees. So no, not my friends, man. My friends can't even afford a fucking bus pass. They can't even afford fucking gas money, like for carting their fucking lazy ass around. But they can afford cigarettes and a 40 every day. Like fuck you guys, man. Like fuck you guys. Like you, you wonder why I don't hang out with you. You still have the audacity to wonder why, why, why Greg wouldn't want to hang out with us. And then you know what they say? They're like, oh, well, it's because he's alt-right. No, that's not why. It's not why. It's because I don't fucking like you. You're fucking useless. You're useless fucking lumps of shit. Fucking going nowhere, dragging me down. That's why I don't fucking hang out with you. It's not because I'm alt-right. 
And anyway, I'm not really alt-right. I could be, depending on what your definition of alt-right is, but I'm, I think I fit the definition of an anarcho-capitalist to a T, but for closed borders. And yeah, there are differences between the fucking races, but I hold everybody to the same standard. So I know everybody says that, but fuck, what do you, what do you want to fucking hear from me? Fuck, that's, that's true. Now, if certain groups keep falling short or exceeding your standards, you know, you're going to come to fucking conclusions about those groups. But, I mean, whatever, fuck, let's, let's fucking leave it at that. But yeah, like, it's, the reason we don't hang out is not because I'm alt-right. But if you're a fucking lefty, that, that's a very good reason. Because you're a fucking retard. And that's what it fucking means. My, like, these guys watch, like, Philip DeFranco and shit. For, like, seven years, you know? When I started my YouTube channel, it was all about skate videos and shit. I, and I'm filming in, like, 1080p or 4K professional equipment, like, doing my best. And they turn out good. And I'm asking my friends, yo, check out my video. Check out my video. Just check it out. Even if you don't watch it, please click like. Just check it out, please. And they're like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. And then I like show up at their house and they're watching like Philip DeFranco. Or like, man, once I went there, they're watching the Full House reboot. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, man? And he's like, oh, well, I'm just, uh, I'm just killing time right now. And it's like, motherfucker, can you afford to be killing time? Like you fat piece of shit. Also, you know, I have a YouTube channel. Like if you want to kill time, like get red pilled. Like, come check out my shit. It's better than Full House. I'll fucking guarantee you that. But yeah, whatever. Fuck you guys. Fuck. So yeah, I base my business around people that aren't my friends, aren't my peers, and whew, fucking skyrockets through the roof. So yeah, that's uh, that's a small part of my story, but you guys probably knew that anyway. Anyway, I'm heading off. Uh, I got to fucking do some stretches and shit like that, get my stuff in order, and then head down to do this fucking estimate and then meet, uh, we'll do the call with the guy from Yellow Pages and then get either spikes or fucking new climbing boots. I don't know. I don't know. I have a certain amount of money left over. I can only buy one of those things. I don't know. My foot really hurts, so I might get boots for the comfort. But, you know, I might get spikes because the spikes I have, I broke them fuck twice. Anyway, it's a long fucking story. And they're not very, they don't go very deep. So I'd like to get a deeper pair, make everything fucking safer so again more to come on that later i hope everything is fucking going awesome for you guys and that you guys are having a fucking wonderful summer like share subscribe leave your thoughts in the comments downstairs fuzzy dunlop skates and you're watching bridge burners tv shadowly brothers